to spiral or not to spiral? In this video, I'm gonna answer why and how to spiral wrap a rod. Stick around. Okay, this is the ridiculously oversimplified reason of why you spiral wrap a rod. Let's pretend for a moment that this is your rod, this is your line, and this is eight pounds of fish or two pounds of fish and six pounds of hydrilla. Now, what happens to a rod, a standard wrapped casting rod with the guides on the top, they are just a little bit above the top of the blank, but they're quite a bit above the center of your blank. Now what happens when you are loading either with a snap cast or with a heavy fish or a bunch of crap you're fishing back out with a fish, what happens to this rod is it has rotational torque on it from the line being above the center of the blank. What that's trying to do is it's trying to twist that blank while you're putting load on. Either way, the weight as you're up here is twisting that blank. Now, opposite of that is a spinning rod, which has the guides on the bottom and that are below the center axis of the blank. And all it's doing is holding the weight. There is no twisting action at all Conventionally wrapped, spiral wrapped or spinning. This is why you take the time to spiral wrap a rod. Now, if you spline the rod correctly and you spiral wrap, what you do is you effectively eliminate any rotational torque on the top six inches of that rod. Now, one of the reasons you do this is there are always these mysterious breaks in the top six inches of a blank or a rod that you can't figure out what happened. And everybody blames it on screen doors and ceiling fans and rod lockers. But most of those are due to the rotational torque doing this and snapping it when you're under load. That's why. Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. Okay, now here's what I've done. I'm building this uh, seven foot eight flipping stick for myself. It started out as a a Rain Shadow uh, REV CB8 Heavy. I cut it down four inches because I was honestly eight feet too long for me. Um, I have done a layout of the spiral wrap. So the way I lay these out is from the line guide on a low profile reel. I'm going to come 15 inches forward and put my stripper guide. Then I go 10 inches ahead of that and I put my transition guide, which is 90 degrees from the top of the blank. And I go in the direction that the handle is gonna be on. Like for myself, I build them. I have a right-handed reeler. I always have the, the reel handle on the right side for me. I put the transition guide on that same side just to protect it. Because when you lay a rod down, you're almost always lay it with the handle up. That means this guide is up. It doesn't get beat up on the deck. And then from there, another 10 inches is my first running guide. Now, I don't know how well you can see this yellow braid, but this is a very smooth transition from the, the reel to the stripper guide, 90 degrees around to the transition guide, another 90 degrees around to the first running guide. One of the benefits of spiral wrapping a rod is once you get to your first running guide, your layout for the rest of your running guides is basically a spinning layout, which means you have less guides. Now, the reason you're doing all of this, number one, you're trying to eliminate your rotational torque. A benefit of this is that you're also reducing line slap. You're reducing friction between the line and the guides with a spiral wrap and with using less guides so you're getting more casting distance and i can tell you 10 to 15 percent increase over a standard wrapped casting rod versus a spiral wrap now you guys want to argue about that 
and call me an idiot, please put them in the comments. I'll, I encourage any kind of dissent, but it works. I, you have, it's, I've done it so many times. I have so many of these rods wrapped this way. I have proved it to myself. Now, the other benefit, what I was talking about with less guides is as you get towards the end. Now this is, whoops, I got a rip, I got a rip. Let's fix this. Now this is three ounces on a heavy rod. And you can see that the line, as, as it's starting to bend, the line gets further away from the bike. If this was a casting rod, as it starts to bend, the line gets closer to the blank, which means you have to have more guides to keep the line from rubbing the blank. That is one of the major benefits of spiral wrapping, but you can use at, at least one less, sometimes three less guides than you otherwise would have because you're eliminating the line from touching the blank. So there you have it. There was, you know, there's several reasons why you would spiral wrap a rod. Um, like I said, the first reason, most important reason is you're eliminating the rotational torque. The second reason is you're reducing friction between the line and the guides. And honestly, the third reason is it's pretty cool looking. Um, it's cool enough looking and it's important enough that, that now some of the high end factory rods, you can get them in a spiral wrap. Custom builders have been doing this for decades. The manufacturers are finally catching up they understand why it's important because you can now buy a custom spiral wrap rod from somebody like me for the same or less than these high end four and $500 rods from the manufacturers. All right, there you have it. That's the why and how. If you guys have any questions, shoot them to me in the comments down below. I'll get back to you. If this is the first video you've seen on this channel, watch this video next. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.